Hey, this is Elena with Black Sheep 303 Creative, and today I am on the Elizabeth Craft Designs blog with this cute gingerbread Christmas wreath card that I made using um, the new Candyland stamps and dies from Christmas Snyder, along with some several other fun Elizabeth Craft Designs products. So I am stamping the two gingerbread people, the gingerbread house, two of the gin the candy cane bouquets, and two of the candy garlands onto a piece of Bristol Smooth cardstock using, um, this is VersaFine Onyx Black ink. You just need like a permanent waterproof ink to do this. Um, and so there you can see I have stamped everything that I need. And now I'm gonna be coloring this with my Zig Clean Color Real Brush Markers. And I'm going to color all of the elements with the exact same combinations of colors. So I'm only gonna show you the coloring of the gingerbread people um, because if I went longer, uh, we'd be here all day, <laughs> but you will get the idea of how I color these and it's the exact same technique for everything else. So I base coated the purple in 83 lilac and now I am adding shading with 80 violet. And then I'm going to blend this back out with the 83 lilac. And on her hat, I didn't really want to blend out some of that like curly cute detailing so much so I, I kind of wanted to leave that as like a decoration on the hat but then under pants I am trying to like blend it out more so it just looks like a shadow and then on his little jumpsuit I added significantly more shading um, because I did want it to go like a darker purple and with the addition of the extra dark purple um, it will change that color to be you know darker than like her hat for example and so I'm just blending the whole thing out with the 83 lilac. And then I'm gonna to go to green. And so for green, I started with 45 pale green as my base coat, and then I'm adding shading with 47 may green. And I'm just basically adding shading as if they were lit from the front. I'm not doing any like elaborate kind of light source action or anything. It's just pretty basic, you know, as if they're lit from the front and then blending it again with the lighter shade, which is 45 pale green. So it's really kind of basic and pretty easy coloring and shading. And I'm not using any water with my zigs today. I'm just blending zigs into zigs, which makes it super bright and colorful, which is what I wanted for this card. Now my base coat of pink is 26 light pink. And then I'm gonna add shading with 25 pink, which is a really bright fuchsia. And um, again, I will then blend it out with um, the 26 light pink once again and then for the gingerbread I'm going to use three shades of brown gingerbread is probably the most complicated part of this whole thing because that was where I took three colors to like get it to the right shade everything else I just used two colors and you can see it's pretty basic and easy of coloring and smoothing of the of them together to get the shading Oh, on the, on the cherry, I used 22 carmine red with 24 wine red as a shadow and then some 62 dark brown for the stem. Okay, so for the gingerbread, I am sort of doing a little bit of 60 brown as kind of like sort of the base coat. I don't totally fill it in because I don't want it to get it too dark. And then I take 64 oatmeal, which is a very pale brown, and I blend that out to kind of fill in the gingerbread areas. But that makes it look like a really red brown and I didn't want it so red. So I took some, a very tiny bit of 62 dark brown, which is a very strong dark brown. <laughs> and I'm gonna blend that back out with the 64 oatmeal. And that's gonna tone down the red in the 60 brown and make it much more of like a true, I don't know, like a just a dark regular brown without so much of the red tint to it. Hopefully that makes sense. And so I'm going to color all the rest of the items basically exactly the same way. So if you see like I used purple, I used the two purples and I added the shadows exactly how I showed and the same everywhere. And now I'm just going over the mouths and the and the eyes on the men on the gingerbread people with my black glaze pen to kind of highlight them because they got lost in the dark brown. And then this is one of my favorite tricks with coloring which is to take a white glaze pen and go over any areas where like I might have gotten color in or I kind of screwed up. It kind of works like an eraser, so pretty cool. 
Now these are all the components for the card and you can see I've die cut out the stamped images with the matching dies and we'll, I'll get into the various components in a second. But this is some, this is uh, polka dot paper from Modus Scrap thinking about Rio de Janeiro. And so this piece was five inches wide by one inches, or five inches long by one inches wide. And I basically punched it in the center on both sides and now I'm, and then I lined it up with the bow guide in the middle there and I punched it on each side to get that weird shape. And the punch board tells you how to do this if you have it. Now this is two and a half, so I'm lining it up in the middle and punching it in the middle and then flipping around and punching it again. And then there are these marks on there that are that say center marks. So you just line it up with those and then you punch in the ends to get the fishtail for the bow. And then that little quarter inch piece by one inch piece there is the center. So to put it together, you're just gonna fold over the ends of that like funky shaped one and I'm using three millimeter adhesive to hold this down in place. It's the uh, clear double-sided adhesive tape. So awesome. Three millimeter is like my favorite. Don't ask me why. Um, and then the little quarter inch piece wraps around um, to create like the knot in the center. And then you just adhere it on the back again, like glue, stick it down with some uh, three millimeter adhesive tape, which is like the perfect size for this. And then normally you just uh, fold these this over, but because it isn't double-sided, I, I clipped it in half and then I kind of monkeyed around with it to get it to look correct under that small bow. It's a little odd because it's kind of kind of large, those little tails, but it has to be the same size as the bow, or it wouldn't make sense. <laughs> and so just to hear that down with some three millimeter adhesive tape too, and there you go with the bow. Now this is a piece of uh, perfect pink soft finish cardstock that I die cut out using the largest die in the dotted scallop squares die set, and I'm adhering it down to a, to a five and a half by five and a half inch card base out of hundred pound white soft finish cardstock. And then this is rust soft finish cardstock that I have die cut out two of the largest and then one of the second largest of the entwined circles dies. And then I've added pink and silver glitter dots to the little dot details on those circles. And I'm gonna kind of stick them together to create what I'm calling a gingerbread wreath. So to adhere this down, I'm using uh, some liquid glue. This is Zig 2A glue pen. And I wanted to arrange the glitter dots so that they wouldn't be covered up by the elements that are gonna go like around on top on the wreath. And that worked out pretty well on the top parts, um, but the bow did pretty much cover up all the ones on the bottom. So I will add some extras later. And then here you can see, I'm just kind of fiddling around with this. And even though they're, they aren't really connected, once you get everything on there, it looks like a wreath, I think. And then that greeting is from the Holiday Cheer stamp set. And I stamped that onto um, a piece of 85 pound white soft finish cardstock and then punched that out or die cut that out with the third largest uh, die in the dotted scallop circles or third smallest, sorry, in the dotted scallop circles die set. And now I'm going to adhere down my various components. So I am popping up my gingerbread house uh, with some foam tape, just so that can kind of uh, hang out a little bit above the greeting. And then my gingerbread people are gonna go on each side and I'm gonna use some six millimeter double-sided adhesive tape to adhere them down. I'm just gonna crisscross it on their backs to get them in place on either side of the wreath. And then my bow, I'm gonna just stick down with again, another piece of six millimeter double-sided adhesive tape to the bottom. And then I'm gonna add a couple extra glitter dots to the bottom edges, cause they didn't really show once the bow got on there and I wanted to have, have those be all around. And now my remaining elements are the two candy cane bouquets and the two candy garlands. And so I'm, I'm gluing these into the diagonally opposite corners as you see there. Hopefully that makes sense. And so I'm just gonna adhere these down uh, with my Zig 2A glue pen. And then my garland is gonna go as kind of like almost like a photo corner sort of over the corner edges there. And I'll be adhering those down. And then I will trim off the excess that hangs over on the sides of the card. And I purposely use like r really, really bright colors, like not traditional uh, Christmas colors because I really wanted that like crazy, I don't know, almost psychedelic candy land kind of feel to this card. And I, I think it kind of worked out. Looks, I really like it. 
Wait, maybe I shouldn't say that. Hopefully you like it too. And there's a good uh, close up on some of the coloring. And I just think that greeting is really funny too. So hopefully I've given you a little inspiration on a fun way that you can use that Candyland stamps and dies along with uh, several other dies from Elizabeth Craft Designs to create a super cute Christmas card. And you could certainly do that in more traditional colors for a different kind of a feel. Uh, as always, supplies are linked in the video description and over on the Elizabeth Craft Designs blog as well as on mine. If you liked the video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, I would absolutely love it if you'd subscribe. Thanks. Have a great day.